Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks. I just had uh, some back-to-back -back stuff going on. Um, able to get on and do a stream, but I'm I'm back. Uh, so today's topic we're talking about cryptids uh, and how to um, you know just kind of the kind of things that are out there and how you can implement the creatures themselves or the entities, whatever you want to call them, uh, into your games, uh, or how you can even kind of create that cryptid sense in your game worlds to as sort of a, a bit of world building and how both of those are sort of, you know, just fun alternatives to the typical uh, monsters that you would run into in, you know, fantasy game or other games for that matter. All right. So, one real quick thing, uh, kind of a shout out to a podcast that I love, and that kind of got me on this tangent. Uh, I've been listening to the Cryptonaut podcast, and the Cryptonaut pad podcast, which I put a link in the description of the video, is a great podcast of just three guys, three regular dudes, talking monsters, uh, monsters, ghosts, whatever. Uh, it's super casual, and... and just really a ch nice change of pace from the, uh, the the channels that try to get a little maybe overly encyclopedic uh, or take themselves far too seriously. Uh, so definitely worth worth a, a, a check. They've been out for a bit. Um, I'm kind of catching up on all the episodes. Um, I just made it through COVID in their library, <laughs> in the background of their library. But anyways, um, they're all. And one real last quick note is they specialize in. Um, they specialize in the lesser known things. They occasionally dip into the more frequently, more commonly known things, but their bread and butter is sort of the lesser known uh, entities. Um, one example would be the penguins of Tuscumbia, which is some obscure encounter from Missouri where a, um, a, a cow farmer comes out to his pasture finds a spacecraft in his pasture that is uh, got a bunch of like two foot tall green penguins wearing goggles and uh, respirators around the, the base of the ship. So, uh, but yeah, they're worth a listen, a listen, a listen to. They're kind of what got me on this tangent. Um, unfortunately, the two week delay has sort of slowed that roll a bit. Um, but because because I've been doing other things and being the monster monsters ADHD brain that I am, um, my um, my dopamine has moved on. Uh, but we're still going to do this. So, um, cryptids. What are they? Uh, I mean, we all know of the famous ones, Loch Ness. You know, Loch Ness monster. We got Bigfoot, skunk ape whatever you want to call it, the Yeti. Uh, and so those creatures, a lot of them <clears throat> are already in a lot of games. The Yeti has been a, a staple of D&D since the earliest days. Welcome, Jim. How's it going? Hey, what's up? Oh, going all right. How about yourself? Oh, I'm feeling good. Four and a half hours of sleep, but I'm good. My eyes look funky today. <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, cryptids. Uh, I mean, so Jim and I come from the Pacific Northwest, where you know we're in Bigfoot Central there. Um, but everywhere has a cryptid of some sort. A lot of them also have Bigfoot. Um, and I lost him. He'll be back. Uh, yeah, it's uh, how to use them in game uh, and and wh where they fit is depending on the game system you're running. In a fantasy game, they end up being just kind of another monster. And, you know, that's, uh, you know, what can you do? In a fantasy game, you know, your cryptids are not often going to be all that all that stand out compared to any other monster. Uh, welcome back. So, um, when you're... But you can still pull off that cryptid feel in a fantasy game. Um, and that comes from having monsters that are either A, unique to a region, 
um, or are described and known by the people in the region as something different. Um, you know, used to have a one in one of my games in one of my long running campaigns. We had a troll called Old Snip, and he was this troll that wandered the woods and he carried a giant pair of scissors and would cut your head off if you got caught in the woods after dark. <laughs> um, that's a way to take a standard monster and turn it into, say, you know, like a cryptid in your game. But cryptids themselves, oh my god, is that a fertile field for new monsters? Uh, and a lot of the newer monster manuals have been pulling from various cryptid species, um, although it's often hard to, to find that line between a cryptid and the folklore and religion of another place. Because a lot of what we consider cryptids, other places will consider part of their belief system. Mm -hmm. you know, um, and then vice versa, like, you know, if you, uh, there's, you know, there's things like the Oswong from uh, the Philippines. It's one of their vampire types. Um, to the people in the Philippines, it's a very real thing. Um, but we're just like, oh, it's just a funky, you know, Eastern vampire. Um, but they have a different opinion. You know, you talk to native cultures in, in, in the Northwest and Bigfoot is part of their belief system. You know, he's, he's, you know, the hairy old man of the woods kind of a guy, right? You know, he's the skookum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. I did, uh, get a, get a t-shirt in commemoration for this particular, uh, stream. Oh, nice. I, I had one. I have one, but it is actually dirty. It was ready for the original stream, but it's in the laundry right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. The, yeah. the, the I, 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 I saw it in the window of the store, and I'm like, I need to get that. That is that is so yeah. awesome. But, yeah. So. Jim and I have a shared cryptid experience in oh. the Howley things. <laughs> mm. um, the things that shall not be mentioned. Or they yeah. still scare me to this day. That, that sound, I've, I've heard it a couple times. Uh, no one's really been able to explain to me what it is. Uh, because growing up where we, where we grew up, we know what coyotes sound like. We know what uh, fighting cats sound like. Right. We know this, what... was, this was not it. And it yeah. just triggered a visceral fight or flight reaction. And uh, I chose to flight because it sounded like it could fight better than me. So I wasn't going to find out. And the weird part about that one is it, it was heard multiple times across the span of what? I think a couple of weeks, if I recall correctly, um, during that summer. Because Garth and I had that yeah. first encounter with it when we were, can't, we were spending the night out in his car because he, he had to go to that paintball game. And then from that point on, we kept hearing it. And then... And then it just went away. Like after that last time, it just, we didn't hear it again. <laughs> I've talked to people that have that lived in that area. And, you know, it's funny. I, I mentioned, uh, it's been years since I've talked to anybody about it, but uh, I mentioned that they've heard similar things or had heard similar things around that time frame. So it's confirmed it wasn't just three teenagers hopped up on Mountain Dew at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, and the thing is, where where I heard it again because I've I've not I moved out of the area, so I haven't really been in the area to hear it. But like a decade later, on some Bigfoot documentary, they're like, "And this mm -hmm. is the sound we recorded." Mm -hmm. I'm like, and Garth calls me. Yeah, and he's like, "Did you were you watching the such and such?" And I'm like, he called me or he messaged me. I can't remember exactly what, but he got a hold of me. He's like, "Did you hear the thing? Were you watching the thing?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Did you hear the thing?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, that was the freaking Howley thing. <laughs> yeah. We never knew what it was. We never it. saw no. anything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, you know, I know what cats fighting sounds like. I know what raccoons mating sounds like. I know what possums getting, you know, caught by a coyote sound like. You know, I've spent, you know, a good chunk of my life in the woods and camping. And I know what natural creatures are out there that terrify me, but that thing, yeah, we would just dead, yeah. never. And it, it's crazy. I mean, having grown up in that area, I mean, back then it was like, you know, primeval woods. Once you reached a certain level, there was no civilization. It was all woods. Now, I haven't stepped foot in that area in hmm, 30 years. My dad's the still farm. out at the farm. So, That's what uh, I, saw, so. I, I, I roll out there every so often. And actually, funny enough, uh, Jen's tattoo artist that she was swapping tattoo work for massage work uh, lived down the same road that your house was when we lived hmm. there. 
remember there's that long little side road that yeah. went down there was the horse round and all yeah. of that there so he was on a trailer on the back of that property okay uh, and I the house actually where you were, think i know that trailer yeah i had a friend that lived yeah. there when i was a kid yeah and so like <laughs> it's still around it's it doesn't look much different mm-hmm. that road winding back down there it's about the same you know and uh yeah. So if anybody's curious about the, what we're talking about, it, I'm going to see if I can short form this. So our buddy Garth and I ended up having, uh, him and I ended up having to spend the night in his car to get, to get him to a paintball game one night. My mom had got her truck stuck in our driveway. And so he snuck it out. Oh, Jim rolled his one again. Um, and so we were there and we heard something horrible and scary as fuck coming at us through the woods from this this gully um and woke up in the middle of the night and then took off now after that we would hear that same sound for a while like filtering up from that same area um it would come up over the hills and then like one night all right so so i'll hold on just a second so yeah i was just telling them the, the alley thing story so yeah like then there's that one night when you and garth were out in the back back pasture running around the berry bushes doing your paintball stuff and you guys are on the headset combos i remember that you guys are out there mm-hmm. playing around and i hear you go and something like you know did you hear that what was that and i think you're fucking with me right because i'm in the house i didn't have paintball stuff so i was just in the house playing on my commodore 64 and uh, <laughs> probably probably setting up another adventure construction set adventure for the three of us probably right? Right. and uh and i'm here like what was that what, what the fuck was that? And I hear, I, and I, I hear the voice change on the, on the, on the, on the mics to like, you guys are running. You're like mm-hmm. clearly running and you're like, open the back door. And I go to the back pasture, back door and I open it and you and Garth come over that fence and make that 10 foot drop. Cause remember it was a cutout in, mm-hmm. the, in the, in the property, you know, cause it was, if it, for people's information, we were in five acres on a hill. And so the, where the house was was about halfway up the hill. And there was like, so it had to be cut out and leveled off. So it would left this big drop off for the back pasture. And so they didn't bother with the gate or the st- and the stairs coming down. They just vaulted the fence and then dropped the 10 feet down and kept booking tour into the house. And we, and as they did, I could hear over the hill, just the, the, the things out there. And we just, we never figured out what they were. I remember what, the one that really, the, that, what really got me was it the first howl was in the distance, like far, far away. And then there was a couple more still fairly wet, far away. And then the one that really scared the crap out of me, it sounded like it was in the tail end of the pasture, kind of at the top of the pasture. Yeah. Right at the, could, at the crest of yeah. the hill. Yeah. And you could hear bushes like the horses were, were not happy that something was out there. So we're like, well, if you know, we're not going to hang out, I'm not going to see what it is. I don't care. You know, my, yeah. my, 16 17 year old machismo will only go so far yeah and the dogs were the dogs were in the house so they weren't out there making noise or anything so they were just inside i seem to remember them bristling up a bit as you guys came in because of course if the door opens they want to see what's coming in but yeah. um probably the yeah. fastest my fat butt is ran in yeah and then like i remember we were pouring through the library trying to find stuff out we mm-hmm. were starting to interview folks in the in the area uh, trying to figure out if there was a pattern. <laughs> you know? uh, it was kind of weird. It was, it was a fun time. Uh, the only logical explanation my brain has been able to conjure up in, in since then is maybe the acoustics of the woods and the gully and stuff took a mundane sound and made it sound like something other than what it was. But the fact that the sound remained relatively the same no matter where we heard it kind of blows that theory away. Yeah. Well, because I've kind of that kind of fueled an interest that I had in, in cryptids. Um, so I've done research over the years, and one of the things that, that take it for it, for what it is, whether you believe or not, I don't care. Right? I, yeah. I'm not even sure I believe. Yeah, um, I'm not a huge I, believer, but I know what I experienced. Yeah. And. <laughs> You know, I've heard theories that supposedly if it was a squash, you know, supposedly they can echolocate, you know, and they do that to kind of keep track yeah. of the other. And there was that recording that I heard. Yeah. Of, so, I mean, if squash, that's what it was, identical yeah. to what I heard that night. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, that makes even talking about it gives me goose pimples. I got goose pimples right now talking about that. That's how much it, of an impact it made on my life. It's something we live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I remember we were talking to the. We talked to the horse farmer in the area because, you know, there's all those horse ranches mm-hmm. out there. And he's talking about like once a year, 
about the same time every year, there's something out running around with his horses in his pasture, kind of getting not, not, not terrifying them up, but the kind of like standing in the middle and he almost described it as out there playing with them. Yeah. So, but he described it as standing like a good, you know, half a man above the, the top of his horse's backs. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, there's also bears out there. I remember, you know, yeah. my sister talking about when, when, when mom moved up to Arlington and had her little farm up there, um, sister was out there in the, uh, in the barn feeding the animals. And she's like, suddenly the, the, all the light coming through the barn door went out and she looked back and there was like this big hunkin form in the door that was all fuzzy she i remember she she laughed she's like I, at first she thought it was garth <laughs> but I'm, she's like but it was bigger than garth and uh which is saying a lot yeah. um Big deal. and then it like took off okay. like it saw her and then like left i'm like you know you probably just avoided getting eaten by a bear because <laughs> you, know, you know you had the pasture door open you're out in arlington um especially back then yeah yeah exactly but anyways, yeah, so that was uh, that was our shared experience, folks. So like that was, you know, just to tell you kind of when I'm when I'm talking cryptids, it is an interest. It's an mm -hmm. interest I've had. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest from a very early age. You know, when I was little, Bigfoot was everything. You know, I watched when I was way too young. I watched The Legend of Boggy Creek. Um, which just got just me it warps I, your fragile little mind. I just got my mom sent me. I had found and she she picked it up and sent it to me for my birthday, the 50th anniversary of oh, that. Cool. The Blu-ray of it. Um, cool. It's gonna. It has the full widescreen because uh -huh. we only ever saw it on TV, you know, back in the day, and so it's now the full theatrical release on widescreen. Well, but so when I was a little kid, like every broken twig, every divot mm -hmm. in the ground, everything. If I found hair on a stick it was bigfoot and i couldn't say sasquatch back then so it was always sea squash and it was like sea squash sea squash of course i'm like five or six oh, sea squash and uh so you grow up in the pacific northwest almost everybody has a freaking bigfoot story you know i mean it, it, it kind of makes it harder to believe in bigfoot when everybody has a bigfoot story because right. you know like they're supposedly so rare but i remember another buddy of mine talking about how he was doing some illegal hunting you know he's up on his tr in his truck off of a off of one of the mountain highways right next to a clear cut and he's sitting in his truck with a rifle waiting for the deer to kind of cross at night in the uh in the opening to try and take pot shots and he's sitting there he's like i'm looking out there moonlight's there I got my rifle and there's all the stumps out there and suddenly one of the stumps stands up and like runs to the wood line more instead of the tree line and he's like it was huge and it was like he's like it looked like a guy in a ghillie suit i'm like well unless there was somebody else out there illegally hunting <laughs> well, I mean, which <laughs> is a possibility that is true yeah. i mean but you know yeah. you, you always have to keep that that skeptical yeah. mindset but uh, yeah, so everybody I know has some kind of story from out there. And I think that's the cool appeal of cryptids is that they seem less detached from us than, say, like a goblin or mm -hmm. an elf or a dragon. You know, even though some modern day cryptids, you know, people say they see dragons and stuff, but like those classic yeah. cryptids are just something a little different. Um, and that's kind of going back to bringing it back to gaming if you if you're not playing a game that's focused specifically on cryptids like beyond the supernatural or something right. like that um you can bring that spirit in by having your monsters be personalized to the area like i mentioned old snip the nightmare troll um and then you know you could have some relatively mundane thing a giant silver boar or, you know, some sort of thing, you know, to us, it seems more cryptid-y, but back then that would be like a legendary beast. Um, but yeah, there's just, there's a ton of stuff out there to look for in the cryptoverse. Yeah. Um, and you can pull from a lot of, I mean, the Jersey devil is a classic one from the East coast, you know, you know, that's some nightmare fuel. If it, Moth if man. it was, Mothman, which evidently one. has had some recent sightings. Yes, that's why I brought it up. I saw something about that. Yeah, Mothman is back. Uh, He's back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I was a kid, my my grandparents had a book. Uh, 
what was uh, Legends of the Unknown, or I, I finally found a copy of it, but uh, that book, uh, I can't, I'll find it's around here somewhere, but uh, yeah, it had like it, it broke down all these different, um, uh, I guess we cryptids, right, and had all these stories about it. And it was stuff, there was stuff about Bigfoot, there was stuff about the Jersey Devil, there was stuff about, uh, high profile ghost encounters demons all this other shit and uh it was really interesting book and it was another one that kind of fueled my interest uh, it's also a good source so back on gaming good source for uh to mine information on various creatures if you want to drop one of these critters into your game something like that it gives you uh, kind of a brief origin you know this is yeah. where it supposedly came from this kind of stuff and uh I mean, I know, I think it was you that ran that uh, Beyond the Supernatural game uh, where we ran into Sasquatch and I'd made the character that was kind of the ripoff of Carl Kolchak, which, yeah. by the way, anybody who has not watched Night Stalker needs to watch that. Just ignore the cheese. Well, okay, it's hard to ignore the cheese. It's got but, some of the, it's got some it's really got good some writing great and stuff. the characters are all good. I, I really yeah. like that. It is it is a 1970s TV show. Um uh, there was an attempt to bring it back. Ignore that bad. one. Ignore that bad. one. Because yeah. they tried to take it too seriously. And they made it a team show. You can't make Carl Kolchak, Night Stalker, a team show. It's about yeah. Kolchak. It was the always guy that him nobody and... believes. Exactly. Everybody thinks he's a crackpot, even though he has proof. And he's you know, handed this vampire over to the Las Vegas PD. They're not going to admit that you know this is a vampire. So we're going to you know, basically discredit this guy who found and killed this vampire exactly i they even had an episode that took place in the seattle underground yes they did yeah, yeah. Right, real quick, that was a cool to, episode that's where he's going after the manitou wasn't it or the native american monster or whatever uh, i can't remember it's maybe been so i'm many thinking years. about a different one just gonna real quick say uh good morning to <clears throat> from the hilt gm cody um we have daniel kearney rw bishop and zane you guys are all here thank you for coming in uh Zane's comment, yes, embrace the cheese. Uh, Night Starker was so much fun. Totally. Totally. It was a fun show. I loved it. I, I'm not overly up on the coelacanth. I don't think the coelacanth was ever considered a cryptid so much as it was just one of those things where local fishermen were talking about how we catch these things all the time or whatever, and people are like, no, they're, they're extinct, and then we found one. Mm -hmm. um, cryptids, I think what really distinguishes cryptids is that there's this air of belief and like local folklore about them. And I'm not sure the coelacanth ever had that at the same time. I'm not an expert on the coelacanth, nor am I an expert on cryptids. I know what I like, and you know, I, I, I'm kind of mm -hmm. into it, but the, 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 and the definition of cryptid also keeps getting tweaked. And broadened like a lot of things I, I mentioned earlier a lot of things that we call cryptids i don't know if they necessarily qualify like you know some being from a religion is it's not really a cryptid because you know it's that's somebody's belief system i mean it could yeah. cross over and I, I believe the whole real concept if i'm recalling the definition of a cryptid because i think it's it's short for like crypto species is basically species that are out there that are as yet unidentified and um, don't officially exist, but do seem to be out there living somewhat naturalistically, you know, and I think that when you, there's that weird broad sliding spectrum, like once you get to a certain point, you're talking about a paranormal entity instead of a cryptid, you know? Yeah. It's yeah, crypto, cool. cryptozoology is, is, is what it was the, is the actual like science, science of it there there's a group or a kind of a segment i don't know how big maybe it's kind of the ma majority of it now i don't know but it seems a lot of people are trying to slide like bigfoot into that paranormal creature you know linking him with aliens and that's and been going on for a good long time because i remember years yeah I, I remember as a kid there was that side element that bigfoot was either interdimensional and that's yeah. why we don't find him all the time yeah or that they were there are some people who are linking Bigfoot sightings to to UFO sightings at the same time. And the assumption was that maybe Bigfoot was a visitor from another planet or something. Yeah. Um, There's an interesting book of written 
Oh my gosh, I can't really. Jeff Muldrum is the author's name, and he's a expert in primate uh, locomotion, I think. Uh, but it, it breaks down. Um, he he examines all these footprints. Of yeah, le legit and non-legit of Bigfoot, and he talks about the ones that appear to be legitimate based on how they move, how the foot breaks when it steps, and the gait. And all, I mean, really smart guy goes through and and you know, well, explains all these different why he believes certain uh, evidence is fake and why certain evidence is real. Uh, what really kind of sold me on it is the forward was was a forward was written by Jane Goodall, you know. And nice. uh, so I'm like, well, that adds a little bit of legitimacy to what he's saying. But uh, I mean, it was an interesting, very interesting book, heavy, heavy science. I mean, it's one, it's not a light read unless you're into that sort of stuff. And I'm not, but it was very interesting. Uh, yeah, it was, was kind of a companion piece to that Discovery Channel show that they had going for a while. Yeah, I, I'm I'm horrible with names, but I was on, on one of the recent recent episodes. Well, not recent because I'm still going through the back catalog. There was an episode of the Crypto uh, Cryptonaut podcast where they're uh, talking to a uh, uh, primatologist uh, who has legitimately been been looking for Orang Pandak, which mm -hmm. is the Indonesian um, Bigfoot species, or sort of the you know, and. Uh, his interesting take was that he points, you know, he points out, and I'm not saying necessarily believe in this or anything, but it's it's an interesting s state of things that of all of the species on the planet that are out there, we're the only one where there seems to be just one of us, one kind of us on the planet at, at the time. You know, like you know, we've got five different giraffes and you know, f six different kinds of wolf. But yet there's only like one kind of human out there. And in our history, we know that there were contiguous, you know, human, you know, hominin species exist, coexisting. So you, it, it's an interesting nudge to could it be there? You know, yeah. you know, because, you know, and also he's a firm believer that, you know, like Orang Pendak is out there, but it's probably not an ape man. It's just an undiscovered orangutan offshoot. You know, because and yeah. we, we keep finding new apes. I mean, they like recently within like the last couple of decades, they just found another orang orangutan, you know, and then we found out that what we thought was one population of gorillas was actually two different kinds of gorillas and two different populations of gorillas. So, I mean, there's still room, but yeah. again, you know, I personally, so oh, good. No, I was just going to say, there's also a lot of crackpots, you know. And that, that doesn't happen. I was out there on my farm. I was making my moonshine, and I saw I saw the skunk hit. He stepped out, stepped out, and, you know, we had some some of my shine, you know, that kind of, you know. I don't yeah, know why I did yeah. that. I'm kind and, of a southern redneck. Guy, there's so a I lot of but. stuff that, that you, you do here, and you're like, well, isn't that just a possibility? And, you know, there's, I mean, and there's some good theories that explain away a lot of it. Like, I remember, like, if we're going to go into alien theory for a moment, there was a lot of talk that, like, so much of the UFO stuff comes out of really questionable um, hypnotic therapy, mm -hmm. the, the, the whole, you know, um, yeah. and that can conjure up stuff that you just, that's has got questionable results. I remember reading something once where they're talking about one of the theories is that alien abduction memories may actually be unlocked memories of people's own births in that, if you look at all the accoutrements that comes into yeah. it, you know, there's usually like a bright light and a lot of discomfort and like faceless, big eyed things standing over you. And if you look about it, that's like the surgery mask, right? Cause you got the yeah. hood and then you got the mask up and all you'd have is a, yeah. a different colored couple of eye orbits and you're just coming in, you know, and, and uh, it was an interesting theory uh, because I mean, it psychologically explains a way that that kind of weird stuff. But then again, there's also this whole attitude attitude that and uh, consistency, like modern UFO abduction, very much lines up with old fairy folk abduction, mm -hmm. missing time, isolated places in the woods, you know, bright lights, yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, changeling babies. The old changeling baby is now today is you know. Uh, alien hybrid, right? Yeah, you know, it's uh, but yeah, I it's it's hard to say a lot about using cryptids in games because honestly, 
monsters are so much a part of games period yeah. but i think what really comes down to if you're going to use cryptids or learn from cryptids for your games kind of trying to bring it back on a topic even if you're not using a cryptid understand how local belief and folklore and all of that can affect how your monsters are perceived and even described in your universe so if you're playing say a fantasy game and your local villagers are talking about goblins, right? Uh, their information, the information you're getting from these villagers may be like, you know, you're, 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 you're I was out at my still kind of a thing, right? You know, is yeah. it really accurate? You know, you know, who knows what the villagers are going to come up with. And the goblins, they can turn into penguins by the light of the moon. And mm -hmm. if you don't like, <laughs> it's like, you're like, yeah, okay, buddy. But, you know, you can play into that in your games too because you're you're your players don't necessarily know the truth and in a fantasy game especially i mean maybe these goblins are different uh, but also if you're playing like a horror game like call of cthulhu and there's something out there uh you can feed on that too like you know your 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 accounts of this something could be very limited you could be like one guy describes it was big like a tree and another guy's like you know it was like a mushroom that had tentacles growing out of its head yeah. and you know they could both be somewhat right because both of those kind of describe a dark young for example um you know the dark young of shabnagoroth but um at the same time though your players don't know what you're describing and you can use that to mislead a lot too. Like for example, you could be going full on Bigfoot in a scenario and have it ultimately end up being, well, I guess what? It's not a Bigfoot. There's actually a troll in the woods or the, you know, it's a werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you know, they're finding footprints that are big and heavy, you know, and there's been loud screams and howls at night, you know, yeah. that don't sound quite wolfish, especially in a modern setting. You could probably really play up, the, the Bigfoot of that, the Sasquatch of that, and end up having it be, you know, more of the, uh, you know, like, oh, you know, look, it's a werewolf. And of course, your players are going to be out there prepared for one thing and then end up running into another thing. Yeah. Um, Classic GM bait and switch. You know, <laughs> I try to avoid that in like really yeah. dickish ways, but, you know, yeah. if you're, but I do think that you can use a lot of good NPC interaction mm -hmm. to build that up. Um, and you know yeah. that just remembering that local belief often conjures really crazy ideas of what things are and often some there's a rat and, and and the other thing is your monster in your game could have a very rational explanation um another recent kryptonaut podcast episode they did they were doing listener stories and i'm listening to this one and this poor woman is talking about when she was a child she was being you know kind of bothered by some sort of entity that was almost like Pennywise like right you know like it would be under her under her stairs and she'd look oh, down no. the, through the slats in her porch and she'd see this creepy gap tooth man the guy and then his fingers would come up through the boards and do a little hello wiggle finger wiggle and then he'd be in the backyard when it was raining and then she starts talking about how at night she kept getting visited by Count Von Count like the Count from Sesame Street who would sit it on her bed and like play with her feet and stuff like that and trying to get her to be all playful. And then he would get all rude. And then she does this postscript talking about how her parents forced her to sleep at night with her windows open. Cause they didn't want her getting too hot. I'm like, Oh, sweet darling. You probably had some creeper from the neighborhood coming into your house. And yeah. like, because like, some of the things she says, like he, he, he warned me that if I ever tried to tell my parents, he would kill, kill them all. And I'm like, that is straight up horrible, like pedo stalker vibe. Yeah. You know, like it's that, like, don't tell or bad things will happen. I'm like, uh, how horrifying. Yeah. And, and well, and the thing is, that's what I was thinking about it. It's like, you know, it's, you know, those, those real explanations can also be a good bait and switch to use you in your game. Yeah. For example, in a fantasy setting, who knows that, you know, the goblins could just be a setup mm -hmm. for a local thieves guild. Um, or I know in one of my games, I had some goblins who were pretending to be ghosts haunting a ruin. Um, and, you know, there would be strange lights and sounds and horrible, you know, you know, and, and it was just the goblins made up there with, you know, a bunch of weird animal horns, you know, making weird noises and 
uh, and you know walking around with you know spooky lanterns uh, but you know you're you know in a like a horror based game you know the footprints in the woods that everybody's writing off as Bigfoot could be some creepy cultist who's just trying to keep people out of the area while, while he's trying to get his his thing yeah. right um i know yeah. i i go ahead no i was i was gonna say i was in a game um garth was running it in fact and it was more of kind of an espionage uh it was an x-files twist twist to it too but yeah i remember uh we were up in the woods and it took place in seattle and our characters were up in the woods doing something and we're at this like compound and you know out of the blue even though we've been talking to local residents and they've been hearing stories about sasquatch in the woods you know i i remember the player the characters were all like oh yeah okay whatever you know but then sure sure as you know, we ended up running into several of them you know and i'm like okay this is kind of an interesting way to in, to throw that character in there but you know like you said never discount the uh the uh, the local population you know listen to what they're saying and it may not like i can't remember what was causing it's been so long the agitation with the the bigfoot but i remember they're getting agitated by something stirring them up and that's why they were out yeah raising you know. hell and you can always remember the six million dollar man ran into a bionic Bigfoot, right? So there, yeah, distinct. There we go. Yeah, I even reused that in a uh, in a Marvel game. I did. Um, I actually had uh, there was basically a mountain facility uh, that was being guarded by a android Bigfoot. Uh, it's actually it was a Stark facility, if I recall. It was basically Stark had this lake resort, and like while he wasn't there, he had a caretaker that was up there. But he also had a android Bigfoot that was up there that would kind of work as his security robot because Stark's an asshole. Right. And like, and like, like I'm just gonna I'm gonna feed the Bigfoot right. hysteria. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, just for the lols. Exactly. <laughs> you know, but yeah, and I, I mean, I remember I was. I was running a D and D game for a friend, and I never ran more than one session. But the main bad guy was uh, the big bad guy was a, a, a Sasquatch uh, that had been driven down from the mountains into this local uh, farming community and was tearing stuff up. And so uh, she was supposed to go try to figure this out, but uh, it never went more than a session or two. Just being an adult sucks when it comes to trying to game. Yeah, but, tell me about uh, it. <laughs> I but, know. I mean, um they're definitely useful. I mean, you can drop them into a lot of different, uh, as long as it's, I mean, obviously if it's hard, hard sci-fi, well, even hard sci-fi, you could drop a, a Sasquatch like creature into, but. Well, and hard sci-fi even has room for that because, you know, you land on a, on a moon and you're like, you know, the, the locals of the system say that this moon is, you know, you know, haunted by like giant silica worms and you know, like, yeah. but nobody's ever seen one, you know, you know, and then the party's out there, you know, you know, looking for whatever, and next thing you know, hey, giant silica worm. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, even Star Wars had it to a degree. I mean, if you think about that, they're always talking about like the Force wraiths and the the, mm -hmm. the things in hyperspace and all of that. You know how there was like, you know, something was something lived in hyperspace, and you had to be careful. Of, you know, yeah. Uh, there's always going to be your legends and stuff, and that's you know again, there's that bleed in with cryptozoology and cryptids and and and, and legends. Like Mothman to me seems very less grounded say than a sasquatch mm -hmm. you know, mothman is supposedly shows up when there's danger and it's very prophetic and you know and uh whereas you know you've got sasquatch who is for all intents and purposes a very grounded at least in the basic form the non-paranormal non-dimensional form yeah. just some hairy dude living in the woods yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah doing what hairy guys in the woods and do totally totally you know and it, 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 it yeah you know, then they got the like the whole the dog man thing, which I, I didn't hear. About. I had no idea that, that was a thing until like four or five years ago. It uh, seems to really have bumped up in in popularity. I, as far as I understand it, there, it's a pretty old, mm -hmm. as far as cryptids go, legend. But uh, uh, yeah, it's that one just, and that's the problem also with cryptids. I mean, not the problem. I mean, the real world problem with cryptids is that once they become popular, everybody sees them. You're right. Yeah. Uh, but is it, is it, but it becomes kind of that, that new car thing, right? Like you buy a new car and suddenly you see that model of car everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it's because our brain attaches to things and you know, there's a lot of things, even as a non believer, my overactive imagination gets me in trouble all the time there's been plenty of times where i've woken up in the middle of the night and i've just been 
just a little creep too creeped out enough to look at my open doorway bedroom door because i'm like if i i i I just know one of these times i'm gonna look over there and there's gonna be a silhouette in my doorway you know and uh, and it's not anything that i live consciously and rationally worrying about you know it's just that sleep deprivation and an imaginative mind um and the human brain's hardwiring to find patterns yeah. and see things where there aren't things, you know, the, so much of it. And then you figure in stress factors. Um, I was mentioning on another stream once how like uh, in the United States, Ohio is considered one of the most weird States. It's like the weirdest state. Like I call it Florida, the North. Well, and the, and, but I, I was looking at Ohio, socially economically and stuff and i'm like there's a lot of factors in ohio that would just lend to that being primed to see things Mm. and encounter things you've got who knows how many freaking chemicals in the in the water and just the environment there because of all the industry in ohio right um and then you've got a long standing history of overworked and overtaxed, you know, taxed energy and resources wise, not mm-hmm. money wise, probably money wise, too, but uh, uh, workers, which leads to stress and the things that people do to relieve stress. Yeah. Um, which is all number of things. And then the peripherals that come from that. How many cryptid stories are people just covering up shit that they were doing? Like, where yeah. were you? Why were you gone so long, hun? And what happened to the car? You won't believe it. I was driving down this road at night and this big ass hairy dude jumped out in the middle of the road and I clipped him with the with the corner of my forerunner. And that's why the fender's broken. Not that I was drunk off my ass and I hit a tree. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. because some people will go there. I mean, yeah. me, I'm the type of guy to be like, I was a dumbass. I thought I could handle it. I hit a tree. That's yeah. me. But also I know full well that your eyes can really quick in a pinch play tricks on you because Garth and I were driving down uh, Highway 2 one night when it was all foggy. And I swore a guy was crawling across the the, the road, like, like, you know, like just like injured crawling. And I, I'm like, Garth, dude, there's a guy on the road. And he's like, ah, and he swerves out of the way. It was a big plastic bag or a piece of plastic that was slowly rolling in the wind, but because of the diffusion of the light through the fog. But my brain sure as hell told me that, that was a dude in the road. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like that whole black dog thing, you know, where the, some of the truckers will talk about, you know, after you've been awake for so long, hopped up on whatever you're hopped up on, you, you start to see black dogs and, uh, you know, supposedly yeah. they cause accidents, but it's kind of the, kind of the same thing. You know, there's times where I've been driving around with way too much, been up way too long, very little sleep, no caffeine, nothing. And you do see shit. You see, you know, critters running around that, you know, for a fact are not there. What's interesting. Yeah. And I've heard recently actually, um, uh, through some of the, the podcasts I've been listening to is we're even finding out that certain kinds of drugs will produce repeatedly, the same sort of hallucinations. I guess there's like a, I think I can't remember the name of the drug. It's one of the party drugs, you know, like MDMA or something like that. can't remember. Uh, and people who take it see like what they call the black triangle elves. Hmm. And it's repeatable. Like, and so like, it's just because of the part of your brain that's being affected. So it really gets you wondering, like when people are seeing all this shit, is it just because they're all on a similar sub DMT? Maybe is what it is. You know, I, I'm not a. I'm not that guy. I made yeah. it through the '80s, through high school in the '80s, and never touched a drug. Yeah, I didn't even mm-hmm. smoke. Mm-hmm. You know, like, Same I here. Didn't, yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't I, drink until I was 21. <laughs> I got I got drunk for the first time when I was 12 and didn't drink again until I was 24. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm I do not uh, you know I I I very much believed the the dare line of business back in the no. day uh, <laughs> i had cops in my family so that, that, was that is of, also true well you know yeah. i was raised by a hippie and lived in the you know, you know and surrounded by all the adults of my life being in the post biker post vietnam biker yeah. community and somehow made it out without you know most of my friends were roasting bulls and were total potheads 
but <laughs> oh, you, you made it out you made it out without a drug addiction and a harley davidson addiction so i mean and I, I didn't join the army and i didn't go to, i didn't go to prison so i'm that comp- i broke the the gen x the mold. lotto yeah. Yeah. um i'm also boring as fuck but yeah <laughs> I tell people that all the time. Like one of my guys at work last night was like, "Hey man, we need to go party as Halloween." I'm like, "Dude, no, I'm 51 years old. My partying days are long yeah. gone." R.W. Bishop, R.W. Bishop makes up a good comment. He makes a good comment here where most of the time, you know, we're documenting animals. Uh, the, one of the best theories on Loch Ness is that it's actually seals yeah. that are in, in, a, in a in a in a line. And could they do that whole, mm-hmm. you know, and it looks like an undulating, you know, serpent form, and they know that seals get <clears> in <throat> locks. Yeah. Uh, um, so that's that's a good one, and then obviously you know sleep deprivation is an amazing source of hallucination. As we kept two guys on guard, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody who's ever been sleep dept, and you, you don't even have to go into full sleep deprivation. No, like because there's sleep deprivation, and then there's sleep deprivation, right? Um, <clears throat> but again, you know, an overactive imagination, like I you know, you know, like mine. Excuse me that has no problem imagining things then given a stimulus will definitely fill in the blanks Mm -hmm. i remember the first night that we slept we spent the night when we moved to that house out in snohomish to the farm i had this horrible dream that my dog came creeping up my stairs and then stood at the base at the foot of my bed and then stood up on his hind legs werewolf style <clears throat> and then i woke up to coyotes howling mm-hmm. so outside influences on a on a fertile imagination yeah totally you know, you know yeah and you know that's kind of when it, when i first heard the the howley things going back to the story at the top of the thing that's what i first thought it was like did i wake up hearing coyotes yeah and then when I woke up the second time and could hear them, because the first time I woke up, they were kind of trailing off and Garth didn't hear them. <clears throat> but that second time I woke up and they were very loud and they were coming at us and Garth was sitting up Rod Street in the car also hearing them clearly. You know, it, it wasn't it wasn't coyotes. No, no, yeah, I don't I, I don't pretend to know what it was. <laughs> and, you know, I you know I have my own pet theories, but, you know, I don't. I'm not married to those theories. Uh, if someone could prove chimpanzees. That's it, man. That's what it is. It's that 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 evil government genetics lab that's up in the back of Fortius and Snohomish, which you, actually that could be an interesting uh, premise for a game. <laughs> one theory that really did actually stick in my head and may very well be the source is up at the top of the hill behind the pasture. Mm-hmm there was a mink farm yes there was yeah. and so those mink got into our chicken coops a couple of times so i heard them screeching and stuff when i was trying to kill them so they wouldn't kill my chickens um it did occur to me that what we might have heard was some minks that had r- broken out and the acoustics yeah. again yeah but again you don't know and don't know. You, but the fact that there is a mink farm up there and I, you and I were not daily hearing minks. Yeah, <laughs> you know, mink yeah. was that one and, noise, you know, that would stand out. You know, so I yeah. maybe we smelled them more than heard them. You know, when one of you killed or whatever. We we heard a bunch of a bunch of weasels fighting. I don't know, yeah, <laughs> or be. killing yeah. something. Because be. minks are predatory. Yeah, could be. Could be. But but uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, this no, stream like, is going to be a short one. I've only got about fifteen minutes left because I got to get to a game. Uh, I meant to start at ten. <laughs> But somehow I accidentally set up the stream for 11. <clears throat> um, this chicken coop story is a farm kid. <laughs> Dude, I, you, Eli knows. I, I had a ton of chickens when I was a kid. So I've got yep. all kinds of... I hate chickens. I can't stand them. They're I mean, delicious. I don't mind chickens. But, uh, yeah, I mean, but yeah, we, you know, chickens is... If you've got acreage, you've got chickens. Yeah. Because why wouldn't you have chickens? They're good for meat. And they're, we raise them for both meat and for eggs. And, on yeah, the farm. And, you know, I've got a friend that raises them as pets, and oh, that was my brother. Eggs. My brother, you my know. brother loves chickens, and had yeah. he, he's really weird because his favorite food is chicken, and he right. loves chickens as pets. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very but, very uh, good dichotomy. But uh, yeah, so I mean, but you know, I remember the coyotes would harass that mule across the street from us 
all mm. the time. And you'd hear him, yeehaw, yeehaw, and then howly, howly, howly. Um, but it was a different thing. I remember the horses that went breaking loose through the neighborhood that one time. <laughs> that herd of horses yeah. running down the street where that stallion had been going around breaking them out. Bessie the hell cow. You remember Bessie the hell cow? Mm-hmm. The mystery cow that showed up in my pasture one morning that wasn't ours. Yeah. And she just sat out there screaming because she was in heat and just like, oh my God, would somebody come get your cow? It took a week for somebody to come get their cow. But can you yeah. imagine if some cow was just wandering through the neighborhood and you're catching the ass end of it in the middle of the night? Uh, I remember yeah. living in Edmonds, which is not the middle of nowhere. Still no. relatively green area where I was living at. Um, one night, I w- we were sleeping with our window open, and I hear what sounds like a girl's voice scream from out towards the highway. I have young women living at my house, my 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 daughters, my kids at the time, and they're 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 friends. Um, so I'm thinking, oh no, what's going on? So I go into dad mode, and I get up, and I see uh uh a dark i see a car parked out in front of our house that i don't recognize so i'm thinking something's somebody's messing right. with my kids or maybe they're home and making a lot of noise one of the you know it's that that, that fight so i go to the back door because i'm gonna I, the sound came from behind the house so i go to the backyard and i just about peed myself because i get there and something stirs along the fence line where behind the trees that are at the fence and I see legs moving, and I'm hearing a big thumpity, 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 thump. And then this fucking deer just shows up, and then, like, Olympic gymnast, like, leaps, like, standing leaps over the, the privacy fence at the back fence, and is gone. But for the minute there, I'm like, is this the fucking predator? Is there some psycho <laughs> on my on my yard? What is it? Yeah. And I come back inside, and then I see a flashlight coming towards, you know, the front yard. And I'm like, what's this? And then I, I, it's one of my kids coming in. It's one of my bonus kids. And I'm like, dude, what's up? And she's like, oh, well, I came home and all these deer were in the front yard and they had my cat surrounded. <laughs> They're like all standing around. She was like, I was worried about my cat. So I called my friend to come help me. I'm like, I'm in the fucking house. Come in and wake me up. Right. I'll help you. But you were sleeping. I didn't want to wake you up. I'm like, this is the thing you wake me up for. That's what that's what parents are for. Like, <laughs> you call your friend who's not even here. <laughs> this is why you're coming to wake me up. But again, you know, th- that whole even that whole line of logic feeds into the whole cryptid experience, if you think right. about it. That irrational decision-making process that makes you avoid the obvious and jump to a conclusion that is not necessarily grounded in what's going on. Those deer were probably not going to hurt her cat. Her cat was probably out there loving every minute of it because he's getting attention. The deer were probably like, Hey, uh, how's it going? Like you weird raccoon. What's up? (laughs) And you know, but that could be twisted into a cryptid story. You know, maybe those were a, uh, I don't know species of deer that is not known to exist that has weird relations with cats i I don't know i mean you could you could twist it yeah was it did you ever know any of the people who worked for that security company that garth worked for out there for that company oh yeah Yeah. did you ever hear about the one uh site that's off on the edge i've been there where you're not supposed to get out of your car Yes, I've been there. Because something follows you. Right you. Now, it's, it's the note on the thing that says, do yeah. not get out of your car. Something will follow yeah. you in the tree line. And it, it, it could be that place was so creepy. Uh, Wasn't I mean, it I a construction admit, supply depot or something like that? Uh, it, the, the one I'm thinking of was a house where the people inside had died under suspicious circumstances. I'm thinking about a different one. There's evidently oh, okay. out in the, you know, how you have out in, in the county, there's all that you'd find those chain linked places uh-huh. where they just have like the, 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 the construction supplies with the culverts and huh? some of their machines. There's one of those sites where you're not supposed to get out of your car. You're supposed to do a vehicle check only hmm. because something tracks your movements through the tree line on the other side of the fence. Well, the, the one I'm thinking of, the house was right off the lake and the, there's nobody in the house at all. Yeah, because it's 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 boarded up. The people that own it, their parents had, had passed away under suspicious circumstances, and they hadn't moved everything out yet. So there's stuff in the house, uh, first furniture. You'd pull up there, and you'd see stuff in the windows. You'd see people, right? So you'd go check it out, being good good security guard. And there, the doors are locked. There's nobody in the house. 
There's no, unless they dug a hole and, and filled, backfilled it as they went in, there was nobody in the house. Yeah. And uh, you, you, no matter what time you got there, the second you pulled on property, it'd be like blanketed in fog. You know, it was just, That's so, just creepy. I'm like, yeah, I'm just never going there again. I just, and you, I, course, I told the owner, I'm not going there again. You know? The construction site enough. could easily be a bear. You right. know, maybe there's a local bear or, you know, we have well, mountain lions still. I have another know. security guard story. I work for another company and this was in Bellevue at a construction site. And there was a post note in our, in our, in our uh, uh, SOP that said, you know, office security guards and construction workers had been chased. I think it was by a bobcat on property. And I'm like, this is in the middle of Bellevue. Right. But this thing had turned up and had chased people around. And uh, so I'm like, that is, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, in the I middle mean, of urban Bellevue. And imagine, though, the cryptid story that comes out yeah. of that. Because you're in a place that shouldn't have a bobcat. And something starts chasing you. It's bigger than a house cat. Yep. It's smaller than a dog. It has got. It doesn't have a tail. You know, it's, it's some it's, kind of hellcat. You know? Well, have you heard about the, uh, the what are the devil monkeys? It's a, mm -hmm. it's a cryptid. Uh, it's a big cryptid thing that's currently having cases where people on the eastern seaboard... Are, are talking about constantly being harassed by these little kangaroo legged uh, prehensile tailed red furred monkeys. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, it, but how much of that is somebody seeing a cat at night and mm -hmm. just getting freaked out. Mm -hmm. And that's the fun thing I think about the cryptids and, and, you know, how much you can use that in your game, but just imagining the perception. Uh, one thing to really keep in mind is the people's propensity for, for coming up with weird descriptions of things that happen in a moment and how it's like when you watch a movie and you're like, Oh, boy, that's so dumb. I would never do that. Yes, you would. Because in the moment you'd probably think the same stupid thing. I'm going to go upstairs because I got to get away from the thing. Okay. Because we all see that we all, but until you've actually been there, you don't know. Like when, when the Howley thing, going back to that case, when Garth and I, that instance, when Garth and I were in the car and we heard the things and we woke up and finally it clicked and we rolled the windows up all the way, Garth's Camaro would start first turn every time. It, he kept it really well tuned. I remember he would always go out and get it and you go, boom, right? It would always start up. Could not get that fucking car to start. It was like the horror movies. Oh, yeah. what's going on? And it was just because his brain was so affected that he was having a hard time going through the normal rhythm of, you know, key and ignition foot on brake, you know, turn, yeah. you know, turn that, ignition. Yeah. That location, um, the Grange, first, which is now a whatever. wedding chapel. Yeah. It was crazy. Right. I've got, I've Welcome to the devil's weird, wedding chapel. <laughs> I've experienced a lot of weird stuff, uh, in that particular building. Uh, because of, you know, we used it when I was in and going to church a lot. We'd use it for the vacation Bible school. And yeah. uh, so unfortunately, I always got roped into work in those. And I, you know. I know you but, said your mom and your older sister used to have some freaky, yeah, freaky uh, feelings. Your, your mom always yeah. got a weird vibe at and that place. It's the same thing. Now, I don't know if it, if, as I've gotten older and I kind of understand how like electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic fields and stuff work on the human brain, I realized that probably what it was was just exposed wiring, you know, uninsulated. Just pipe, a weird whatever. building. Just yeah, a just weird building, building with a mystique I mean, that you didn't like, you know. Going downstairs into that men's bathroom, I was. It was I've great. never I, been inside it, but it was always yeah. seemed like, why is this place so fortified for being yeah. just some local <laughs> community building? Like, it's and of got course, metal again, grates over the windows. It's always, you know, there's like very few actual pieces of glass in the window. And, <laughs> and, and again, you know, back to the cryptid thing, you know, you look at a building that doesn't, yeah, we're talking about cryptid, which are creatures, right? But buildings, why is this building that looks like a bunker out in the middle of a place where we don't need a bunker? This is the middle of rural Snohomish County. Why do we have a bunker? Yeah, and what, what, this doesn't make sense. What, what's the yeah. story? So, I mean, you can build whole stories around why there's this random bunker in the middle of Snohomish. I mean, God, I remember back in the day times. we joked around about it was some vampire stronghold that he was right. in the basement. You know, you know <laughs> I mean, wouldn't surprise me. That place was super creepy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's always my my sister. Swear, my, there's always my my Garth and I seeing what we swore was a giant bat. Um, even though to this day, I'm sure like it was, it had to be an owl, but just, you know, in that moment, we, oh, even with yeah. a spotlight on it and even watching it for a while, we're like that, those wings don't look right. It's too yeah. big. It's an owl. 
Uh, it could have been maybe a uh, 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 what is, uh, a heron that got lost or something. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah but it was flying. The thing that got us is it was flying around a light post. And mm-hmm. now that I think about it, real back back then, I think we just wanted to believe that there was something weird about it because it was probably a bird flying around the, the that that post, scoring easily to get insects. Uh, it was the dead of winter, which is the weird thing because there was snow yeah. on the ground. And like, there's nothing should be up there, but birds of prey don't tend to migrate as much, especially like owls and stuff like that. A lot of, you know, a lot of those don't, a lot of them don't migrate very far away and owls are perfectly cool with the winter. So the owl's probably like, I can't find mice, but moths are tasty. Yeah. (laughs) And in abundance. (laughs) Yeah. And so like, but back then we swore it was a giant bat. I remember my sister saying that she saw it sitting on a, on a, on a, on a, fence post as we were driving up the street you know you know it's you know it's you know it was yeah. probably just a freaking owl and what yeah, my sister yeah. saw was probably also an owl because bats right. don't generally sit upright right. you know but you know you're a kid you're dumb you have an imagination um right. you sometimes you're just this is the other thing to remember with cryptids sometimes people are just going with the groove yeah like oh you you just subconsciously you're like I want to be part of the fun exactly. yeah so like I saw a shadow in the darkness I'm like yeah I was up that way too and I saw this 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 <laughs> ape like face looking between the tree. why are they why is it always country folk whenever you have to tell these stories I, I, but, I, I, I gotta stop doing that I'm gonna nobody's like and, yeah. yeah I ran into a bit of a, a, a bit of a spot of bother in the <laughs> woods you know? oh fair <laughs> chap yes I was out in the woods with the hounds and yeah. I came across this rather large man that was covered in red fur. It was crazy. Yeah, I was out there with my brother Vinny, and we we ran into this big ape-looking mook in the woods. And I said, "Hey, is that Charlie?" He's like, "No, Charlie, Charlie, you, Charlie, you had to get yourself a new fur coat. I don't know." <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, if, you know, it's, if, it's always the country guys, and I yeah, think that totally that just doesn't help with the whole cryptid thing because, like, you know, no, you know, well, it's like God, they had why that. Why is it always on. in the middle of nowhere? Why is it always the 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 rural folks? <sighs> Although I got to tell you, if you go ahead and listen to that podcast I mentioned, and I'm not going to plug them enough because they are an excellent, they're, they're, they're an excellent show. It was literally like if you and I, you, Garth and I were sitting around talking about cryptids, but we're also drinking and cussing a lot more. Um, well, yeah. I so potty mouth. Well, I mean, it would, it would raise my <laughs> sailor, dude. Of course you do. But um, a sailor cop. <laughs> Exactly. The less less popular anime, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, who watches that one? <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, you know the, the you hear about a lot of the cases they're talking about. These lesser known cases are not country bumpkins. They're mm. suburban couples, upstanding professors. You know, like you know people who. And the one thing that's very interesting when you when they talk about a lot of these cases, these people have nothing to gain. Yeah. Like they don't go out because these are lesser known cases. So clearly they haven't been riding the coat trails of their Patterson gimbal film for the last you know 80 years. Right. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um they they're like one and done's a lot of times too. You know, they like they had an encounter and then like nobody ever reports the same shit ever again. And but they also don't go on to fame, you know. I mean, of course, it could be a case of failed fame, like they wanted to, but it just didn't grow grow legs and gain traction. Yeah, like that alien burrito guy. I don't know if you ever no, that one. I haven't heard about the alien. Burrito. Oh, that was it. Actually, it was here uh, in Washington State, and it was a guy that was up in the woods with his dog, and he came across this. Well, this is an alien one more than a cryptid one, and he came across this floating spaceship, and so he took video of it. Uh, and uh, at some point, the alien attacked his dog and ripped his dog. In, and this is his story. Uh, ripped his dog in half. Well, he, he beat this alien with a stick. And, uh, I think wrapped I have it up. heard this one. Yeah. But continue. And he wraps it up in, a, in a, one of those reflective blankets. Yeah. Right. Takes it home. And he video, you know, he's video recording. It's kind of very akin to the alien autopsy. Yeah. Right. Where he opens it up and he's got this on video and the thing moves. And it's clearly fake clearly i have seen that one now they actually and, didn't uh, know it as the alien burrito that's what they called it on the art bell show yeah uh, that by the way that is a resource that is sorely missed uh art yeah. bell may rest in peace that was a that was a great program uh, is the show finally gone no the show's still on it's george nori that, that it's uh coast to coast am yeah, george um, nori is not a bad host no i like him he's just yeah. not Art bell <laughs> 
but you know, eventually that the alien burrito guy had been debunked to high yeah. hell. Uh, in fact, you know, they numerous times, but it was just one of those things. I remember the first time I heard that story, I was absolutely fascinated with it. Saw the footage. I'm like, Oh my God, this is, you know, this is the proof we need that, that these things are real. And then, you know, of course, when the rational mind kicks in, you're like, okay, yeah, that's clearly, uh, uh, you know, a, a animatronic just it's movements aren't natural yeah i seem to remember that when i saw it all right on that note i do need to get going because i got a game to get to um uh thanks for coming on jim thanks for yeah, everybody thanks who showed up in the, in the in the uh comments uh you old geek and gm cody and from the hilt they all have excellent channels go ahead and check them out gm cody's good for game history and game reviews and just overviews uh the old geek he's we do mid, mid midweek geek over on his channel on, on wednesdays he's got lots of games going on on his discord uh he does lots of cool other side videos where he reviews modules talks about just general gaming topics and he does some old vintage uh computer game playthroughs too like he's been playing cool. dungeon keeper and stuff uh let's see and i also mentioned from the hilt he is uh, a gi joe expert extraordinaire but he also uh, has his own RPG that he, he he pimps a lot on his his channel. So check him out as well. Uh, again, thanks for everybody for coming. Uh, the schedule should be a little bit more regular, though I'm going to say, that of course, obviously it's going to get interrupted for some holidays. Um, that's Thanksgiving's coming up. I do get to go back to Washington for a few days uh, Fun. around Christmas. The kids are actually flying us back out there so we can spend Christmas with them. Unfortunately, I'm like coming in on the 24th and leaving on the 27th. So it's really <laughs> whirlwind, um, but it'll be cool. Um, and so obviously that, you know, I think that will interrupt the schedule. Maybe not. Cause I think that's after the Sunday. Anyways, um, I'll see you guys next Sunday and uh, get out and game, quick, have some fun. Real yeah. Quick, when, we, when you do that, we need to go ahead and spend the night up in the pasture behind your dad's house. We can do a live stream from there. Maybe we can get a repeat of the Howley things. I'll be a little far away. My kids live in Blaine. <laughs> oh, well, you know. Oh, well. It was worth yeah. a try. Well, maybe we'll have our own Howley things up there. That's the middle of BFE anyways, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Talk to you later, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. And everybody, have a good one.